hello guys welcome back to our channel nigerian submitted petition against um the federal government on the issue of hashtag SS protest and human police brutality of course and um, the british parliament have decided to sit and look through and investigate and to look through the evidences and investigate what transpired on the 20th of, of october 2020 in nigeria precisely lucky to get well while we're at it, uh, the CNN brought out a footage that sparked a lot of reactions. Of course, Lion Mohammed threatened the CNN and all that. Well, as we speak to you, the federal government have decided to do the needful against CNN. But before we go into the news proper for the analysis, we'd like you to subscribe to our channel by clicking on the red subscribe button. Beside it, you see a bell notification icon. Please go ahead, click on it to get notified as soon as we update our channel on YouTube. The federal government, that's, that's the Nigerian government, on Monday petitioned the cable news network CNN demanding an immediate and exhaustive investigation into its report on the Lekki Tollgate incident to determine its authenticity and form conformity to basic standards of journalism. In the petition addressed to Mr. Jonathan, Hawkins, VP Communications, CNN Center, Atlanta, Georgia, USA. The government said if the international media organization failed to carry out its demand, it will take any action within its law to prevent CNN from aggravating the answers crisis. The petition dated November 23rd and personally signed by the Minister of Information and Culture, Alaji Lai Mohammed, was made available to the news agency of Nigeria in Abuja. The CNN in the investigative report had alleged that, that it uncovered that Nigerian security forces opened fire on unarmed protesters at the Lekki Toll Gate in Lagos during the NSAS protest. The report titled How a Bloody Night of Bullets Quashed a Young Protest Movement was aired on November 18 by the International News Organization. We write to put on record that the report did not just fall short of journalistic standards, it reinforces the disinformation that is going around on the issue. It is blatantly irresponsible and it is a poor piece of journalistic work by a reputable international news organization. In the first instance, the report did not live up to the most basic of the core principles of journalism, balance and fairness, the minister wrote in the petition. Mohammed said the CNN failed to exhibit the journalism ethic of ethic of balance and fairness in the report but slanted the story to favor the reporter's desired conclusion. Rushing to air such a momentous story without representing or without presenting the government side is inconclusive and inexcusable and indefensible. CNN said it contacted over a hundred protesters and family members but did not speak to one official of Nigerian federal government. While CNN said there was no response from the army and that officials of Lagos State would not speak in view of the judicial panel that is investigating the matter. It did not say what effort it made to speak with any official of the federal government. The truth is that CNN did not even attempt to reach the federal government. Nema El Bagia, who presented the report and most probably led the investigation, is conversant with the Minister of Information and Culture, who is also the spokesman for the federal government of Nigeria. Yet did, not, yet did not say that she even tried to reach the minister. It is therefore strange, to say the least, that she would rush to air an important investigation report without getting the government side, he said. The minister said the CNN was not present at the Lekki Gate and on the night of the incident, but relied heavily on unverified footages it harvested from social media. Unlike CNN, a reporter from the British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC Pigeon Service, that's Damilola Banjo, was at the Lekki Tollgate on the night in question. 
She was quoted as saying soldiers shot periodically into the air and not at protesters, a direct contradiction of the position taken by CNN, who relied on second and third hand information, he said. Mm. Now, have you now heard what uh, Lai Mohammed is saying concerning this hashtag and SARS protests that took place, particularly in Lekki and uh, Tollgate? Now, a quick one. Let's go to the panel. At the beginning, uh, Malami said, let's look at through all the statements they've been make, making. Malami said that it's possible uh, that the hoodlums wore um, military uniform. I asked the question during that period. I said, will military allow you in your life to wear their khaki, you won't die in Nigeria, try it. Even if your uncle, even if your distant uncle, your distant, distant, great guy, your father, mother, sister, uncle related to you, if there's anything like that, he's a military man and you wear his khaki or you bought khaki, you now decide to wear his khaki and they catch you on the road. Sorry is your name. And they will not allow, the military will not allow hoodlums to wear their uniform on their behalf. I laughed over that statement when that thing came online. After a while, the military called, when a, a, a Sarah reporter carried some of the news, they said, fake news, military was not even there. After a while, when the panel began, uh, the first statement was military was not there. After a while, military was there actually, but um, they did not shoot any bullets, they didn't come with bullets. After a while, they said, no, um, so, uh, sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, someone who said a uh, uh, military got angry that um, but someone who did not say the truth or he was misinformed that he invited them. After a while, they said actually they came, but they came with blank bullets. After a while, they said no, actually they came, but actually they came with um, uh, uh, that the bullet was empty. In fact, when they, uh, they they put when they shoot, it will just have velocity to not really kill. After they just started the testimony started contradicting themselves one after the other, and even one of the reporters of CNN had to say, have you now seen? That's the same military that was not there. But after there were seven trucks, you, did you mistakenly go to Lekki to get that seven trucks for the military came? You know, you just keep seeing reports a bit different here and the footages showed a lot. You know, when they keep, when uh, um, uh, Sir Uncle Lai Mohammed, that's the minister, Ms., uh, his, his Excellency Mr. Uh, Alaji, sorry, Alaji Lai Mohammed said that the CNN were were relying heavily on the footages that was on social media. I want to say this very quickly. The footages, did they manufacture themselves? And one of the beauty of the social media age is the fact that you can be anywhere. In fact, the beauty of this age is the fact that the Android, the smartphone you are holding has camera. Unlike those days, those very early days, where we have, um, for you to have, um, I think, after the normal camera, we now had camcorder, where for you to film anything, you have to hold your camcorder, where everybody will notice that you are filming it, or you begin to have these long cameras that people will begin to notice that you're actually shooting something, and it will easily be caught. But in this era that we are in, now, you can be making a call, and you see an information sensitive, you know, activity that's going on, just put your, shift your camera a little, and you start recording. Sometimes it's as bad as a, a ball pen in your pocket. It has a camera. So somebody may be thinking you're holding the phone. Okay, he's not holding the phone. But your ball pen that you just put in, that you put in your shirt, is already filming it clean. You can just go back home and, you know, do the Bluetooth transfer and upload on social media. So sometimes one of the fastest people who get the fastest information, sometimes not even with the media houses, but be individuals who were... Who are the same? That's why most of these media houses will ask for freelancer uh, journalists who will just, you know, go around get information and give it to them authentic information because that has video footage. So if there's a video footage to show that such a thing happened, then 100% is possible that it happened because non individuals or, or individuals cannot just upload what didn't happen. Where did they get the footages from? Uh, some persons have been calling that it was a drama uh, that never happened. Sometimes it was a massacre that was bloodless and all that, you know, joke and try to play it down. But the victims are talking. The only thing that people are just saying, where are the victims? Why are they not talking? They are not talking simply because they are scared. 
Is there any security to guarantee that after talking, you would leave to tell the story? Even the young people, the youth that uh, uh, that participated in NSAS, their account was frozen. I don't know. I do not know if they would have it have been released now, but it was frozen. So if the youth, the youth representative in the panel, their accounts were frozen, then what's the possibility that you that would come to testify that a your uncle, brother, sister was involved in NSAS and something happened to uh, NSAS protest and something happened to them will be set free? These are the things that's making a lot of them not to come out. Lip service to such protection. But that's where we're going to wrap it up. What's the take on the fact that uh, Laya Mohammed, uh, the Minister of uh, Communication, Information rather, and Culture, is saying that whatever happens, that if they do not do their proper investigation, they will do everything within the ambience of the law to do against CNN. Let's find out what will happen in subsequent days, weeks, as the petition by UK Parliament is uh, the review of the petition on the UK uh, uh, on the NSAS, uh, NSAS protest in UK is ongoing. We'll get you informed. Keep you posted.